All right. Well, welcome, everybody. This is probably our third installation of the uh, special interest group for IP development. And uh, we've got some really cool topics to discuss today. Uh, we know that uh, some of our participants are going to be, uh, you know, looking at this after the recording. And uh, some of us are uh, in collaboration mode here and now. So we're going to take advantage of that to the extent we can. Hopefully, lots of good conversation. Um, our illustrious new president, Charles Roxon, is um, here to make sure that we are parented correctly and uh, you know we don't misbehave. And uh, John, our ex-president, past president, I guess is the right term, is here to make sure that we cause trouble, um, you know, and stir things. So, you know, we can't miss with this combo. Um, so the game plan today is to start off with um, uh, Suzanne Loeb and a discussion about her plans for um, both uh, intellectual property development and intellectual property, uh, you know, kind of protection and those various other concepts around IP. And um, this is intended to be kind of a story and an experience and kind of a business game plan. And Rudy Mick is going to do something quite similar, but his is going to be more retrospective because he has been around this block numerous times and uh, is a walking success story. So we are anxious to hear that one. And any time that might be left over, um, there's a couple of concepts in our IP taxonomy document that we've been developing as a special interest group. And we'll return to that and just kind of flag a few of those things and discuss those. Um, and then we will collaborate and close up. So uh, that's our game plan. And, um, and just so you know this, I'm, I really don't normally wear my sunglasses at night. That might be a song. Um, and uh, it's just that I had uh, cataract surgery yesterday and but I kind of am okay with sunglasses. Hey, um, so Suzanne, are you ready to rock and roll? I am ready. So I will stop sharing and pass the baton to you as soon as I see there's my button. All right, to you. Well, in life, we all have a path to walk. We have lessons learned and we have stories to tell others. After the initial excitement of the first IP meeting, I fell into a state of stagnation. I actually fell into a pool of stagnation last week. I was drowning, in fact. When people though, collaborate in a trusted environment, I have found that synchronicities begin. Frank called me and asked me if I would like to share my beginner's luck here with the IP and creating a product. And I said yes, because I knew that this was my moment to step up and make things happen. Now, this is a very short story about how I began working on a product and how I learned through the school of frustration. I found that I needed to work to stay positive and stay focused as I went through this process. And I found myself really working hard. I knew it was critical to create a brand. I knew that I had to refine my mission. I had to get things in order. I will tell you that when I gave myself a 90 day challenge to get pulled in and focused, things began to happen. I found that when I gave myself that permission to do something very small and doable, it was manageable. 
I'm going to share what the experts have told me or what I absorbed from the experts. And I'm going to show you what I did to get started, stay motivated, and make a big difference in creating a product. Now, it took me a month of struggle and frustration. However, I picked four of, I think, the most important questions to share with you today. Number one, keep your project up front and in focus. I put the name of my course, The Safety Soloist, everywhere. If you looked at this wall, you'd see Safety Soloist on post-it notes and different aspects of my plan right there in front. I set a date to do something small and I gave myself 90 days. So in another 45 days, I'll let you know if that worked. I defined my brand and I did something very interesting and I'll tell you about that in a minute. And I also looked at asset protection. I took what I learned here and did my own research. Now, things began to click for me when I decided to really make things happen in my brain. I really believe in the positivity of visualization. And I decided that I would let my subconscious mind decide what it wanted. Obviously, what I was doing was not working. I think that when you create a brand and you create a mission, you create a course, an online work, a piece of art, it's you. And we unfold in a way that is not always linear. Other people have opinions and I have mine. So please take this with a grain of salt. It may or may not be a good fit for you. But I found that what I learned from the gurus was not working for me. For instance, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> I wondered about that. And I also wondered about what comes first, the work or the result? Well, of course, the work comes first. As Stephen Covey said to us, years ago, begin with the end in mind. And in my case, I found that starting from the end really made sense. When I learned to train myself to see it, when I found examples of seeing it, it all made sense. For instance, I went to the end of a process of when I'd have that course out there and launched. And I decided I needed to get a closer look of what it really looked like. So I went and I downloaded a copy of Study Master or Master Study. It's a WordPress plugin. And that helped me see what I needed to do by clicking through the demo lessons, by clicking through that demo site, I was able to see every nuance that I was missing when I was watching the tutorials on YouTube. I thought, this is something good. I'm going to keep going with letting my mind set the pace. So I had some good ideas, and then I got one panic thought. How much time is this going to take? I'm a full-time student. I'm a wife. I'm a volunteer. How much time do I have for this? And I think the short answer is, it depends. And maybe a better question is, it depends on the product and what you decide to do first. Now, I decided to do something very tiny, a book list, a reading list for safety soloists. That will be my first giveaway when people opt in on my website for my newsletter. A tiny project, I told myself, is just fine. It doesn't have to be epic. 
Now, achieving something was very important to me because I needed that boost of motivation. I needed to feel successful before I could be successful. I set that target in my planner. Lesson number three, find your brand and the mission will follow. I found that defining my brand really opened the doors for me. I did every personality and leadership assessment out there on the internet. I did Myers-Briggs, Viva, the big five, you name it, I did it. The one test that I found the most useful for me was something that I did not even imagine. Sally Hogshead created a course and a book called Fascinate. And I found her assessment helped me understand. She says, in a competitive environment, the fascinating option always wins. Well, I certainly wanted to be fascinating. So I took the course and I found myself with keywords. As I laid out the Myers-Briggs, Sally's test, VIA, and all these other tests, a pattern began to emerge along with keywords. Those keywords were my brand. Those keywords will be part of my SEO. So knowing yourself and your brand will lead you to know customers. Now, I know I have a certain niche of customers, safety people. However, it's going to be easier to find them if they know where I am and what I'm talking about. They know where to find me. It will be easier to build your, your learning management system, your LMS, your platform, if you know your brand. Now, there are a number of other things that help, and that was what I focused on next. It's never too early to think about asset protection. So the support system that I set up before I actually did the work was choose the right platform and the level of support. One YouTuber shattered all of my misconceptions about learning management platforms. He tried Udemy, he tried Thinkific, Kajabi, and many others. And he did a 45 minute killer of an interview and review of these platforms. And what I found was astonishing was that after using all these platforms, he decided to go back to WordPress and the WordPress plugin called LearnDash. Now I used LearnDash about three years ago when I played around with that, when I thought about creating a course. And it was all right, it was a bit clunky, but I found it was most useful for me to know that he actually used every single one of those platforms and he could talk with authority about them. Certainly staying on top of things like having a good attorney, mine is Lombino Martino in Tacoma, Staying updated with newsletters like ipwatchdog.com and having a group like you is really important because we need that synergy. We need hearing each other talk about this very important subject. Now that you've heard my four lessons, I've got a couple of tips. Number one is always protect your customer. And we know that as consultants, right? But we need to look out for them. We need to look for negative reviews about ourselves and certainly about our learning management platform that we're choosing. Now, my husband laughs at me. He says, you're always looking for the negative. But, you know, if you know the negative, you're forewarned. Are there any security breaches? I could name one large company that had a security breach that most people just glossed over. I didn't. And think 
ahead to a possible exit. If you're on Kajabi and you grow to a point where $299 a month is a little too rich for you, you may want to have an exit plan and you want to make sure that those customers that the Kajabi platform has been gathering are the names and addresses and information that you can take with you as you downgrade or you go somewhere else. Things are happening in the learning management field. I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be a new best learning platform in a couple of years. That's why I chose to use a WordPress plugin called Master Study because it gives me freedom to choose different integrations. It gives me some flexibility. I don't have to have everything all at once. And I can add things like BuddyPress or forums as I go along. Now, the second tip is one that I think you'll enjoy. Test the tech early. I don't know about you, but I've always been bit in the backside by tech. Now, this is a tip actually from a course creator who teaches on Udemy. Her name is Marguerite Conradi. She recommends, and I think this is a great idea. I'm, I plan to do it. She plans to create snippets, and she has created created snippets. And she says on good authority that Udemy, which is a very well used platform in the business market for corporations, Udemy experts will screen it and give you honest feedback on your tech, sound, video quality, your content, your pace, how you deliver anything that you want. They have a laundry list that they'll give you because they want to pre-screen their instructors or their experts as well. I think this is terrific advice and I have my snippet almost ready to send into them. Now it's not gonna be on the safety soloist. I picked something a little benign like Italian cooking. So, that's what my story is. I wasted over a month of struggle and frustration. I muddled around following advice that didn't suit my style, didn't suit the way my brain works. However, I did learn many important lessons and I shared them with you today. Let's review them real quickly. Number one is keep your project up front and in focus because that means your mind, your subconscious, subconscious mind is going to be working on it. So let your brain work for you. The second is set a goal that's really doable. Something tiny, doesn't have to be big. Something that you can create and put out there that will make you feel successful. Mine's very tiny, but it's going out. Define your brand and mission and everything else will follow. And asset protection is critical. Start planning for your asset protection before you even begin. Your platform, your plugins, whatever you're choosing, make sure it's going to work for you. And those two tips, well, I think they're pretty good, but I'd like to hear from you. Protect your customers and do a tech test. And now I believe I don't have the time. I thought I was going to set my timer. How much time do I have? Do I have some time to take some comments or questions? So let's do this. If, if there are some uh, burning questions, let's toss those out there quickly. I'd like to jump to uh, our next speaker just as I'm watching the clock here. Um, well, we can circle around later. Thank you. And, and so, yeah, if, if, um, if anybody has a question that they'd like to ask Suzanne, um, let me just ask if you would just uh, toss it in the chat and, uh, and we'll get back to that one for sure. Um, and Rudy, could you give us uh, your story? Um, and, <laughs> you know, just a, a quick upfront on that. Hey, Rudy, if you would just kind of tell us what your company is and what um, you know, kind of what your value proposition is, so uh, we can all kind of appreciate where you're coming from. That would really be cool. 
Okay. Um, Surprise attack. Sorry. <laughs> there, yeah. No. 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 That's okay. Um, speed in this process. Speed is our friend. Uh, my name is Rudy Mick. It's great to see everyone. My company is actually a conglomerate of companies. So the masthead is the Mick Companies LLC, and we're based in Colorado. We also have offices in LA. Uh, the mantle of businesses within that one is consulting, one is leadership development, specifically using alpine skiing and climbing and blue water sailing as metaphor for leadership, decision-making, uh, leadership maturity. That is a really fun part of my life, I will tell you. Um, and then uh, we've also got an LMS company that we're developing and we go live with that actually in about a month and a half. So building on what Suzanne was just sharing with us in big ideas, taking about 30 years of our work and taking all of our tools and actually putting it on a subscription based video platform for those clients that may uh, or businesses that may not necessarily be able to afford us in our consulting or in addition to our consulting as a support base of learning. Uh, to Frank's question about our area of focus, I've been doing uh, purpose and values driven company development since 1978. Uh, the short version of what we do, most of us on this call understand the concept of B Corps, B Corporations. I would say now in a single sentence that we are really skilled at building B Corp styled companies long, long before it was fashionable. Um, the why of that is a short story in terms of the definition of the word restaurant, the root definition is a place one goes to be restored, talks nothing about food or getting fed. And literally the word restaurateur translates to restorer of soul. So if I work in a McDonald's, a Burger King, or the most beautiful fine dining restaurant in the world, I look like a host or a server or a bartender or a chef, I'm actually a restorer of soul. In that button is the sense of purpose and inspired work rather than a dumpy dead end job. And I would make the case that even in the lowliest restaurant, least expensive restaurant in the world, we can't restore anyone without the dishwasher. So rather than the most dead end job in the world, a dishwasher being a dead end, literally they are restorers of soul and we celebrate every clean glass, sparkling piece of crystal and silverware. So tie that to tracking fiscal responsibility and that's our work. Um, started my company in the restaurant business. We now work in 11 different industries in six countries. And um, I'll stop there. All of, the, all of that litany of work, we're now in our 43rd year. Uh, my first copyright, my first registration was back in 1982. And uh, I keep learning. Uh, I've worked with about 10 different attorneys in the process of patent copyright registrations. I've spent a small fortune, well over six figures uh, with those attorneys in this journey. Lots to learn and it's one area of law. I'm not an attorney. It's one area of law that I don't mess with. I, I so. Headline number one. It, so Frank, did I give you enough? Beautiful. We jump. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, right so then with, with that work as background, I'm on the board of directors also of Institute of Management Consultants. I'm a, a, C, a CMC, which is a registration mark, by the way. Right. We'll talk about that in a moment. And um, I'm really excited to be here and I'll do my best to share expediently what I know, which is not much. Um, so headline number one, I've already stated, this is an area of work that is copyright IP protection that 
in one, on one level of the 21st century, there are a lot of folks that would say, forget IP, and a whole other set of groups that would say IP is everything. So I'm somewhere in the middle, and definitely to Suzanne's point, and many of us on this call, uh, my IP, our IP, our intellectual property is my retirement package. It's certainly part of the retirement and the ongoing uh, longevity of my work and my company's work. So that said, uh, I've got three primary headlines for our audience and some examples of the various use of marks. When, and I'll explain marks in a moment. Headline one, in my experience, uh, IP is something to absolutely use an attorney with. If you're highly technical and able to move very slowly, patiently, fine, do it yourself. My experience is it's worth every penny. Um, trademark attorneys, patent attorneys, in my experience, expensive or less expensive, none of them are cheap in my experience, move exceedingly slow. Why? Because the patent office, trademark office, moves exceedingly slowly still. So there is, if don't expect to get a protection legally um, in days or weeks. So there are interim steps to, to work on with this. And I mentioned they're not inexpensive. Um, right now we've got probably eight, I think we're right at 18 registrations, too many copyrights to count, about 25 trademarks. Um, and we'll talk about those in, in just a moment. So use an attorney, don't expect them to be cheap. Those are points one and two. Point three, there are five marks I want to talk to you about. One is what most of us probably know most uh, clearly is copyright. I'll show you these marks in just a moment. Copyright, small c with a circle around it. Copyright is anything that's been published. Even if, it's, if you put a c on it or not, it, if it's written, it's copywritten. However, the fight and the protection only comes if you name it and you fight for it. Trademark, somewhere between a registration that is an R with a circle. Again, I'll show you these in just a moment. That is probably the most protected status of any of the work we as consultants do. It's closest to a patent, but it's not a patent. So there is no, there is no protection, there is no patent pending. The R simply signals this is a unique branded title or product with an R. It deserves an R. It gets that classification. The reason I name this is the C is copyright. I can put it on a piece of paper, a piece of um, template on my computer. Again, I'll show you this in just a moment. R is an official registration. The third element is a TM, which stands for trademark. Sometimes the TM can be replaced with an SM, which is a sales mark. It's a name. It's a protection that is more than a copyright, but less than a registration. Typically, we'll use it as TM. I'm working on getting the registration. We don't have the registration yet. So I've got a TM on this, it's protected, okay? Those are the main four, excuse me, the, the fourth is a license versus a franchise. Uh, we can talk more about that, it's a bigger conversation. The copyright trademark registration will typically fit into a license or we're licensing those registrations or copyrights or trademarks on occasion, a patent, okay? That brings us to the fifth criterion, and this is a big headline, very painful lesson for me personally. Patent for any of us 
unless we're making something physical and mechanical. So I, for one, don't do that. I work with intellectual property, IP, and the concept of an idea, the concept of the way language or tool sets of ideas integrate, that concept and integration of an idea is patentable. However, it's got to be applied for within 13 months of going to market. And if you miss that window, you're done. You can't ever get it. Period, end of subject, done. So much so, we've also got a costing tool of in the restaurant business for prime cost management that is actually formulaic. It's proven. I've used it since 1982. It's a concept that still the, the world of work has not embraced in a, in a really interesting way. It's so simple, it's beyond. I've tried again this year to, to patent it and even to register it. I can't do either one because it's been on the market for so many years. So I've screwed myself. Pay attention to that. Okay. On that note, if you've got questions, uh, you might ponder those. I'm going to pull up real quick uh, a couple examples of these insignias. First, let's talk about copyright. Um, here's an example coming up. Uh, you should be able to see my Mick logo. Yeah. This is one of our logos. So this logo, we're in the process of registering right now. It's so unique with double I, which is my last name, that I've been told many times by very good attorneys, don't even bother because this is your name. And it's so unique with the double I, don't worry about it. However, and I'll show you another similar logo in just a moment. However, um, a small R like the R with the, the CMC would service this and support it a little bit more if I wanted to. This is an option. Down here, please notice, if you can see my cursor moving, the Mick Companies LLC copyright 2022. I update my copyrights every year on generic documents, every year. Some things that are proven tools, I'll keep the original copyright date and then upgrade the, up, the date as well. I'll show you that in just a couple moments, okay? I'm gonna shut this down. And let's see, I think I need to stop and go again. Suzanne, I wish I was as smart as, as you and would have put this on a, um, on a slide deck. I apologize to the group for taking the time to do this. Um, let's see. This is a license again with the MIC logo. MIC companies. Again, copyright on the license, all rights reserved, every page. So once I, here's another piece with this. Um, let's see. So all rights reserved, I'll close this off. Thank you for your patience with me with this. Uh, let's see, registration. Here we go. This is one of our companies. Uh, I mentioned this to you. You should be able to see leadership in the fall line. Okay. So notice this is the name of one of my companies. Leadership in the fall line is a pun about fall line in skiing. It's the line that a ball would travel if we dropped it on a hill. So leadership in the fall line. This is the Mick logo with the circle with a slightly curved instead of a straight line. We registered this because 
of the onomatopoeia of the name, but also the play on the logo originally. So we put an R on this. Um, and again, why leadership in the fall line? Every time I've got leadership in the fall line, the R is there. Now notice this down in the second line and even the first line, leadership in the fall line has a registration mark again. In traditional law, once I mark with an R or a C copyright on one page, I don't have to do it again through, the docu through that document. A single use C or R works. However, I found just from my own phobias that I will tend to go ahead and put the R or C in every line. I wonder what questions you've got. You know, just, just a quick one, uh, you know, Rudy, one of the reasons to do that everywhere is if somebody copies a paragraph out of this paper and they use it, yep. um, you know, hopefully they'll have attribution, but number two, your R will show up or your C will show up. Ab absolutely. Thank you for that, Frank. And also, Suzanne, a shout out back to you and your presentation at the start of the hour. I personally was thrilled that you named every source uh, in your presentation. You gave credit to the authors of the work that supported you and the work around you. And to me, this is the essence as well. If, if I wanna describe, talk about Simon Sinek or Suzanne or Warren Bennis or Drucker, or whoever it might be, John Anderson, I wanna, if I'm referring to a piece of their work, their intellectual property, I want to give credo and shout out to that author for sure, for all the reasons that we're alluding to. Um, here's another, I think, can you see Mick Method here? Yes. Look okay. Yeah. So Mick Method, even though this is a double I and it is my last name, this is a methodology in the approach to our work that the patent office, trademark office actually said, yes to, we could get an R on this because it's sp speaking of a specific six step system approach to consulting and with our unique name. Now, here's a headline. I've been repeatedly suggested come up, especially with an R, with something other than my name, some unique. So if you think about pharmaceuticals are probably the best about this, coming up with these bizarre one-off names. The reason they do that is for registration and IP protection. It's really, really interesting. So Mick Method has an R and it would be even stronger if I had, hey, the best darn consulting tool in the world, right? But even, even that is the descriptor of the work, easy to do, not so strong. So there are various levels of strength in this process, okay? Um, so those are C's and R's. Let me show you a copyright. So here's another, if you can see the how-to of safe space, excellent. So safe space communication, we now call this MIC safe space communication to strengthen the mark even more. The interesting, so I put this together in 1995. I got fought by the copyright office for years. Finally, we made the case we could go back to 95, 97, 2001, 2005, two, and about two years ago, most of us saw college safe space. Oh, I don't want to talk about anything. This is not collegiate safe space. This is actually about feeling safe to have any conversation, really troublesome, hard conversations and coming out the other side. So this actually talks about a copyright date from 97 to 2012. We registered it finally in 2017. 
but it took us that took me that long right and we started working on it it's these eight elements track data my truth my experience our truth etc other stuff through here but the combination of these eight elements is what construed a registrable name it's how we put the pieces together tied to the mick brand so yeah, on that one please you know rudy is that um um can you use safe space with your registration mark without the mick element um because i do okay. i do uh i do and we put we put an r on it every time and i actually welcome people trying to challenge me on it so we're actually putting this topic out intentionally to so it's the only mark i have that i'm actually not worried about somebody else taking because so many people are using it I want them to come to me and go, how did you get an R on it? Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm done fighting for it, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's that's a really cool psychology going on here because, I mean, that safe space as a phrase is used many, many oh. ways in, all over the place. And uh, yeah. it, it's really elegant to go ahead and get your registered copy of it, knowing that you, you're not going to challenge anybody. Right. Uh, you know, you're not going to go to court because somebody else is using it. Right. Exactly. And how we even came out of with this name is very much the same way that it the concept of safe space has been utilized is just language. Right. It's it's what I want as an outcome. And one of my graduate degrees is in Gestalt psychology both clinical and organizational design. And one of the outcomes of our work in Gestalt was I feel safe to say anything I need to, that needs to be said, we have created a crucible, right? So to have that difficult dialogue, as opposed to going, oh, I don't wanna talk about that. I'm backing out, right? Poor me, uh-uh. So again, it's a noun, it's a verb, it's, <laughs> it, it's really fun. Very cool. Um, those, for the most part, um, are it, I think, let me, I can show you the use of a TM, but basically anywhere between that copyright and registration would be a TM. It's a, it's a title in progress, if you will. But, you know, Rudy, don't you have to have, um, I mean, actually something in progress technically to use? Yes, again? yes, yes. So for instance, yeah. So Frankie, thank you very much for that. So here's another example. You should be able to see culture equals brand or can you? Yes, yes. Okay, so culture equals brand is a phrase. Yeah. Culture drives brand so we do so much work in the last two years in business predominantly since covid pandemic culture finally made it to bubble up to be a word that the world of business works with i've been using it since the late 80s early 90s that culture is brand brand not as a marketing not as a logo but the brand experience and brand engagement so to your point, we're in process right now trying to protect culture equal sign brand, culture drives brand. The legality, so what, it, Frank, to your point, I've been told by our multiple attorneys over the years, the TM officially, you have to have something in the works you're trying to get, to your point, mm -hmm. at the same time, you didn't hear it from me, slap a TM on it and just know that we're in the process of digging. And so that's, you, that's not official legal advice, but it is off the records advice from a council. 
Yeah, and really all that means is that somebody could challenge you. Yes. Um, and, you know, I yeah. mean, it would be off the charts before somebody would um, actually, you know, make that like a legal challenge, but, it's, um, you know. Exactly. So this slide, just to let everybody know, this slide actually, how do you use purpose and values mission? Suzanne used the term mission. Sometimes purpose and mission are mm -hmm. synonyms. We use them differently. However, this model right here, this is a hand version of a model we're working on right now for registration. We call it IVS, Issue Value Solution, is what are the company values? What's our purpose? What's the issue? The more values we can name. So teaching a 16-year-old kid or a 65-year-old PhD which values apply to this issue? What are the behaviors from that value to get to a solution? And we can get a board room moving with fiscal diligence and just line level staff actually sounding like they're investors and board members with this simple three-step process. What's the issue? Which values apply? What are the behaviors that come from this? Issue value solution IVS in short. So for what it's worth. Also this M circle up in the corner that you can see, should be able to see, that is another copyright of ours that we're working on with an R simply because it's a simple M. But it is ultimately just like Shell Oil or McDonald's where my fantasy is, is it will go from Mick Consulting to Mick to M, right? Would that uh, we be that successful? And that's, that's my uh, delivery, unless you've got questions or with other, regardless of questions. So let's open the floor for uh, other responses, other ideas, questions. So my, I, I hope I was clear and the examples were simple enough to gather. Andre, thanks for your head nod. Suzanne, thanks for your head nod. I appreciate it. So I was um, getting ready to switch gears here, Rudy, if I may. Um, Please do. Um, to the I, group, I, thank you so much. I love that presentation. And, you know, actually, let me just confess, this, this is a way to learn more about Rudy. <laughs> and, you know, kind of what your journey is and kind of uh, your areas of expertise. And, uh, you know, and I loved hearing Suzanne's struggle about, you know, how in the world do I put this story together? And, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, bookends to a perfect conversation. Um, and, uh, you know, Suzanne, I, my only regret is I wish I would have said, Hey, Suzanne, what is your mission? Where, what is your business proposition, um, to, you know, to kind of throw you off center uh, right at the beginning, <laughs> but also to just really find out where you're going. I know it has to do with safety, but I, I'm still don't understand quite the context of that and some of the dimensions of that. Um, but that is that is a work in progress. I have sat in rooms with people who spend weeks on a mission statement, and I <laughs> it's evolving. But my mm. my purpose is to provide uh, training and at, I mean in a very simple aspect uh, to provide uh, coaching, uh, training, and support to safety soloists or people who are in the safety uh, industry because many of them struggle to, I want to end their struggle. I mean, that's my mission, but I'll say it more elegantly next month if you ask me. I, I, have, a, I have a suggestion, you know, how the th three, word, three word mission and values are like, when you can get it to three words, you know, like FedEx, get it there. Ah. And, or the world on time. Yeah. <laughs> or or uh, what's the, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, uh, not, is it? I think it's Nike, do it, or another one, I forget. Just like, do it. Yeah. yeah, just, you know, do it. So 
you wow. you could you you could go with Rudy's approach and test out be safe. Uh, wow. Now wait a minute. Don't you go off and trademark that <laughs> while you're waiting for Suzanne to get that <laughs> secured. <laughs> I would do it with an uppercase B, B yeah. uppercase. Say. Yeah. Um, yeah, you John, your point with that, and Frank, I apologize for interrupting. Oh, good. You, I'm intrigued between a marketing statement, a brand branding statement, and an actual purpose statement, right? The world on time or just yeah. do it. Unbelievable marketing slogan. Is it actually our purpose? I don't know. But, but there is, therein is the dialogue, right? Incredible. Well, the there's a story of, of a fellow going through, a consultant going through, or the president, I don't know, some mucky muck going through a, 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 turn, uh, a big warehouse at Boeing. And there's a fellow who's cleaning up, you know, janitor sweeping. What do you do? Uh, I build airplanes or we build airplanes. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows, every single person knows what we do. And he's, sweeping floors and he's building airplanes yeah that's that's what they do we build airplanes when you've got a message like that there's clarity and there's power so i really think it would be fun to have a whole session on branding and tying in mission vision value you know as you know kind of spokes around branding um you know, I'd love to just talk about how branding is a promise. Mm -hmm. Your brand is your promise to your customer uh, or your client, and uh, they must perceive that or it's not going to be relevant to them. Uh, so there's, there's many, many fun conversations, but that kind of takes us away from IP. And uh, so Chuck, crack the whip on us and tell us to get back in line here and we will do so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're on mute. Sorry, you can't tell us to crack the whip. <laughs> no, this is all. Uh, actually, it all has to do with IP. Uh, uh, anything you say that you put on paper that you speak out loud, um, you know, it it has to do with IP. Yeah. Listen, yeah. I I spend a lot of time in the IP world. All my luggage tags are from the company called Seed IP. You know, which is. <laughs> <laughs> an IP law firm here, um, and there's everything can be uh, couched in terms of intellectual property. What you know, what you do, how you do it. Mm -hmm. um, they're all involved, and um, I think Rudy has given us a, um, a brilliant summary of the different ways of protecting it. And definitely Suzanne is at the beginning and Rudy is looking in the rearview mirror. You know, they come together and it lays out what Suzanne and a lot of, you know, everybody else has to do. Um, we are almost out of time though. And so if I have to whip crack, it's, I have to get out of here at five. I have another thing to do, but <laughs> any other key questions? Thank you, Suzanne and, and Rudy. This is really fabulous. So, you know, here I am with uh, uh, a whole bunch of stuff to talk about with IP taxonomy, um, but I think we have heard the perfect material for one day, probably to the point of saturation. Um, and, and let me just uh, reiterate, uh, thanks to Suzanne and Rudy. And, and, you know, one little condensed nugget that I was gonna toss out. Um, you know, I did some work on the inside of a couple of venture capital firms. And when we would do due diligence on prospective companies that would be worth adding to the portfolio, um, we always looked at how thoroughly those startups had protected their IP. And so they need non-disclosure agreements. They need, you know, the full gamut of everything that gives them unique ownership of their ideas. Um, and that motivated me to get a nice TM on my brand for the Corelytics financial dashboard that I started. And uh, later on, I found out that that probably doubled or tripled the value of that one asset just by you know, declaring ownership. So 
you know, this IP idea is not trivial. <laughs> so, um, so, hey, really a blast working with you all. And I think we got a lot more sharing to do, but dang, my clock is saying, get the heck out of here. Um, so just, yeah, let me, let me just reiterate Chuck's question. Anybody have any other quick comments uh, to throw in before we jump ship here? Well, it's a good time to uh, put up a couple of ideas for the next one or the one after so that we get some, some, um, you know, some more of an agenda and we've got more of an ad direction. We're a new group. We're just really getting started. And there's so, it, this is such a big world that yeah, yeah. it really yeah. involves every single member, but many people don't, they don't know, you know, like, oh, I don't have any IP. I, I don't have a book, but well, they hey, do. What if, what if we pick on Chuck to do a story um, and, and, you know, Thomas has been so quiet that I think it's absolutely mandatory that we pick on him. And I, I have my own question. <laughs> oh, now he raises Specifically, it. Uh, we've just created content for IMC now. Yes. This is my recurring task tracker for events such as this one. You'll notice that here at line 30 is the actual event was hosted followed by this rather theoretical list of stuff that I never actually do, but I could, damn it. Um, <laughs> like social media posts that include snippet A, snippet B, and snippet C from the original source. Um, rather than get into the nuts and bolts of my list, let me ask the broader question. Who owns this recording? Who owns the content? How do we use this to drive membership and interest and value appropriately? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Thomas, I forgot to talk about that. Go no, ahead, Chuck. and we 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 definitely need to put this issue on the agenda because once you record a video thing, it comes under actually an entirely different set of laws and regulations. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, Tune I in actually, next month. Yeah. We gotta stop. Ne yeah. Next, next month, month. This I've is I've got beautiful. those formats. I've got actually those releases for IP for video. Super. Yeah, I really right. have to run. Thank you okay. all so all right. much. Very stimulating. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Have a nice I wanna, uh, Pretty good to I be wanna, here, you guys. I yes, want to talk thanks. about that psychology okay. stuff, Rudy. Bye bye. Okay. Okay. Remember, a week from a week from today, the nineteenth speaker oh, yeah. series, Tom yes. Cox speaker series. We got yes, a good right. program. See you next Tuesday. Okay. Three thirty is talking. Bye. Cheers. Okay, thank cheers. you guys. See you. Bye bye. <laughs> Congratulations, Big. Thank you.